Hey everyone, the Inner Nerd here. Today I'm going to be doing an inbox review of the Matilda Mark II from Tamiya. The instructions are what you'd expect to see from Tamiya. There's 33 steps in total, breaking down each stage into sub-assemblies. The first steps start off with the wheels and lower hull, then move on to the suspension. The last few pages show the three colour schemes A to C, which are Phantom, Defiance and Filibuster. In total there's 20 road wheels to make, which takes some time and gets a bit repetitive, but is simple enough. The suspension is made up of three parts and it's important to take note of the part numbers as these are handed left and right. Step 11 shows the assembly of the rigid tracks. If you're going down this route, you'll need to do it now since the side armour won't allow you to access it into this area once it's been fitted. That's it for the lower hull now. Next you'll move on to the upper hull and add all the accessories, followed by the mating of the upper and lower hull. Both A and B use Corners camouflage scheme used by the British in desert theatres. You'll be instructed to use XF23, 59 and 26. Making it look like this restored Matilda. But looking at reference images, the corner scheme used Portland or light stone, silver grey and slate. Scheme C is an overall XF52 flat earth colour with a darker shade used as a contrast. If we take a closer look at the sprues now, A and B are duplicates and contain all of the wheels and tracks. The rigid tracks are nicely detailed with no flash or ejector pin marks. You also get a flexible rubber track with this kit, and under closer inspection, it's just as detailed as the rigid one. The upper hull features the armour plating texture as well as ribbing. Through C has all the larger parts. The turret and nose section feature the cast texture already moulded onto the parts. Through D contains all of the smaller accessories such as gun barrels, hatches and other small features. Finally sprue E leaves the side armour, and two figures if you want to make the model into a diorama. This could be something for me to keep in this stash for a later project. You 
You also get a bag in the kit containing polycaps and string for the tow rope. The decal sheet is minimal but well printed. The defiance text does take a lot of carrier film, so we'll see how they act on the model. Taking a closer look at some of the steps on the instruction shows the polycap fitting on the upper hull. It uses a slip joint in the front and then a push fit at the rear. If you are planning on using the rigid tracks, you can assemble the upper pieces first, allowing you to access them before the side armour goes on. This way you can detail them properly before it all gets closed in. But if you are planning on using the vinyl track option, then you'll need to leave the drive sprockets unglued, as this will allow you to roll the track in after it's all been built. Step 7 can be a little bit misleading with the parts A24. If you turn over the page you can see these parts attached if you're a bit confused about the assembly points. Steps 12 and 24 show the holes for the accessories that need to be attached. Make sure you drill the right ones for the version you're making because there are more holes than you need for the Mark II. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. In the next video I will be showing the full build and painting of this kit so I hope you can join me for that. That's all from me, so I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye for now. If you enjoyed this video, why not take a look at some of my playlists by clicking on the links on screen, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.